Hi there, lovely people. Welcome back to the lovely place. Today we are back up here and the tractor started. If you've been following, if you're a part of our channel, you know that we've had some tractor issues lately and uh, it seems like everything's working fine and the alternator's charging the battery as it's supposed to and the relay's not stuck and things couldn't be better, right? Today, that means we get to grapple. We get to grab our, I think it's a 72 inch long or wide uh, WR long grapple. It's already on the tractor and we get to attack these piles. Told you a little while back that my goal was to get to work on these piles before all this green stuff started appearing. And here it is, late March, and it's coming out. So it won't be long till this looks like a big island of lush green trees and stuff in here if we don't get this cleaned out. Now, the bulldozer was cleaning up the area up there where the barn went, where we're gonna be putting our home in the future. Of course, we gotta take some more trees out to get the house in there. And he pushed all this uh, dirt in here along with some smaller trees, a few decent sized ones, and a whole lot of just growth. And then there's been growth on, on this dirt, as you can see, but we've got three piles that we want to deal with this one in the middle is mainly good solid trees that i'll need to be getting out cutting up getting prepared for firewood or potentially even lumber if the wood's still in a good enough condition for that this has been down for right around four years and so uh, i'm not sure how long wood's good before you know while it's cut or it's fallen down before it gets to the point where it's rotting i think that's gonna <clears throat> of course be determined based on conditions and as you can see this is out here in the sun this is out in the field we've got about close to 20 acres out this way about 40 acres out that way and woods on each side a creek along the entire property and some beautiful hills out in the distance there so it's time to get to work and make this place a future homestead that's the plan that's what we're working toward i believe what we're going to do i would just burn this right where it sits but it's kind of close into these trees and those over there so i'm going to work on this side a little bit and on that side trying to just move that stuff on the far side and i'll probably do the same thing at that on that pile and maybe burn it in place but try to scoot it that direction a little bit now before we hit the piles down there up the driveway here i had previously cut some trees that had fallen over the fence line and uh, i'm gonna run down there with the tractor grab that take it out to the center of the field where we've already got a good burn pile prepared and uh, get that off the side of the driveway. Y'all see what I just saw? No. Nope. Hydraulic fluid leaking right here. I don't know how that got loose, just over time, I suppose. You can see it coming out right here. I saw it shoot up when I closed off the, or when I opened up the uh, mouth of this thing. Okay, I got them tightened up. Let's hope they don't leak now. Just gotta keep an eye on that.
so the plan now is I'm gonna pick around the edge of this and just get the stuff that's low and maybe some of the trees that are kind of growing out of this dirt and just start pushing things up in there so that I can get a little further away from the trees when we uh, go to burn. So that's the plan. We'll see how this goes. Uh, should be fun.
so I shut the tractor down for a second so that I could change the batteries out on the camera. I came back after about five minutes and I'm having my tractor issue again. It's not wanting to start. Um, last time on a previous video, I checked the battery voltage with the multimeter. I checked the alternator voltage. I checked uh, the starter. I checked everything. And at first we thought we had a bad alternator. And then after jumping the alternator, uh, it seemed as if we had a stuck relay and the, the alternator started charging the battery. Right now the battery still shows 12.6 volts. I'm not really sure what's going on, but uh, I'll let you know in just a second. At this rate, our homestead will be ready by the end of the thousand year reign. Okay, so I got my multimeter out. I checked the battery. It's 12.8 amps. There's 12.8 amps going to the alternator, which the reason I checked it is because that ended up being what we thought was our issue uh, that we just fixed day before yesterday. So I'm going to take off. I've already removed a couple of screws. I'm going to remove this one, and we're going to remove this panel here. And I believe under there are some of our fuses and relays for potentially the starter and... Uh, maybe other items that might help us so let's see what's in there let's see if there's another screw anywhere oh one more screw down in the bottom of this cup holder at this panel see if we can figure any of this out so I have my manual in the truck over there I'll pull it out and see which one of these relays maybe for the starter and I'm just gonna bypass it if possible and see if this thing will start by bypassing the relay that'll be interesting so I've come out to the outside under the hood part of the tractor those fuses in there that's the main fuse box but there's a pdu fuse box out that box out here on the passenger side up top we're going to pop it open i think that's where the starter relays at so we're just going to check on that there's the cover okay it's very dirty in here I'm looking for any mice damage. I see this connection here that's got nothing connected to it, which I'm assuming that's the way it's supposed to be because I don't see anything that should be connected to that. But you'd think that they would cap that off if it leads anywhere. But one of these relays, I believe, is for the starter. So based on the diagram in the owner's manual, this is the starter relay. Um, however, you have this top cover. This pulls up this way, and uh, this is in the way. So I'm probably going to have to figure out if I can just slide this whole bracket out to pull that relay up so that I can maybe test a thing or two. Before I do that, I want to pop the multimeter on, put it on direct current, 20 volts, and we're gonna just quickly see if we can determine whether or not, let's see, find a spot to set this thing. We're getting any juice. Probably, I'm assuming this is the wire that goes to the starter right here. So I need to find a good ground somewhere on the tractor. I believe we can do it on this right here. And let's go see if we got any so we've got 12.79 volts going right there. So uh, that's probably what's hitting the starter. Let's check the one right beside of it and see. Same. So that all seems like it's getting power to it at the moment. Uh, 
so that's a good sign there is a clip back on each side in the very back it's black and you pull it over to the outside of this box and it releases this box so that it can come out okay came out just like this it'll only go in that way so I know how to put it back in what I need to do now is just check out the diagram on top of it and try to figure out uh, which uh, fittings or which connections to attempt to jump as I'm trying to start this I think it's obvious but I'll do a little checking into it all right so I've identified that number 86 and number 30 those are the, the connections for the switch that will connect when the relay activates and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a jumper wire between those two that will uh, literally bypass the all the safety mechanisms uh like the neutral safety switch or the uh even the seat safety switch that i'm seated or any any other safety switch that we've got uh neutral uh, clutch those types of things. So if, if this works, then uh, We know that it's not a starter, but it's something in between the ignition switch and the starter before you do that Make sure your your parking brake is on make sure it's in neutral Make sure that the vehicle won't move if it starts because this will start the vehicle up if the starter is not bad and In that case it will run over you. So you don't want that to happen to you with a tractor so we're about to pop, put this in and see what happens. It's not doing anything. Yeah, I'm getting nothing. Not sure if I'm doing this test right, but just uh, not having any luck. So if you watch the one of, I think is the very most recent video, you'll see why I thought it might be a relay. Um, but even then we thought it was maybe an alternator relay, but now I am uh, going to look at the fuses. I don't think it's a fuse because we've had this issue uh, and then it started since then. Um, what I did, I had to reset the alternator basically. I jumped the alternator to make that relay open up. I'll attempt that in a little bit too, but that typically I had the engine running when I did that because it would start, but the alternator just wasn't charging it. So we may have bigger issues with the computer or some kind of unit that controls the whole electronic system. But right now I have found that the uh, F5 area is where the fuse is for the starter. And so the way I did that, this is for fuse this is for the fuse box for models with a cab and i go over here and i see engine starter and it's f-005 that's a component name label is f5 we'll see if we can see anything that resembles that and give it a shot so i pulled the fuse out of the center there that seems to be the one and this fuse i don't know that you can tell on here but it looks really good uh, i'm just going to check these two beside of it just to roll them out as well well since the relay bypass didn't work i'm gonna take this plate off and see if i can get the multimeter on the starter see if we can pick up any kind of activity down here so i've got this plastic box over the top of this and then I had a cover, a rubber cover over that nut down there. I'm assuming that might be where I can check the, uh, the power out from the solenoid. So I'm gonna give that a shot and see. I'm gonna go up there and give it a go. Now that sounds like a starter problem. For the first time now, it does sound as if we have a starter issue. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can check some voltage coming out. I may have to call somebody. This may just be above my head. I bet all of you already know that, but I was trying to figure this out. So based on the way that sounded a second ago, I'm gonna go ahead and 
put a, a booster pack on here and try to jump the battery. I mean, the battery's showing good in there, but I would say with all these cranks, it's def definitely a little low. Just to rule that out, hopefully. The multimeter, I can check that again, but I'm going to boost it anyway. All right, that's not going to do it. Okay, last ditch effort. I'm going to attempt to hit the other relay. It's called the engine start relay. I want to attempt to jump it or engine power relay. Well, it's not the starter. Based on that, it's not the starter. So that gives me some information. So I'm assuming these are reversed and this is actually the starter relay. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up when I bypassed that one. All right, I think it might be time for a service guy. Uh, I could charge the battery again and then see if, uh, see if that uh, gives us any more power. I'm gonna check the multimeter again on the battery and just see where we stand at the moment. 12.6, it should crank over with that. So, and give it another shot real quick. Can't give up just yet. That was the most hope I've had in a minute. Now I'm getting nothing. That's the weird part. Maybe I blew a fuse. Okay, while you weren't looking, we got it started, but we're not fixed. We've got an issue, and the issue is something between the ignition switch and the starter. Because here's what I did. I jumped from right there on the starter up there up top up top that's the main uh input from the 12 volts from the battery and that lower white wire right there, that lower white wire is the initiation of the it, it, it sho shoves out the spindle with the gears on it so it can engage with the flywheel and the 12 volts that's coming in kicks that starter over well to get that to happen i just took my wire so i just took this wire and i took one end of it and i touched the lead on that white wire and i took the other end at the same time and i touched the input from the 12 volts the big wire now this is not recommended this is uh something that I'm not recommending or telling you you should do. I'm just telling you I was pretty much willing to try anything to get this tractor started. It started, but now here's the problem. I could turn the key off right now and it's not gonna start back. And the reason it's not gonna start back is because apparently it thinks that e the, either the ignition switch is bad or either the uh, clutch safety switch maybe even the seat safety switch something who knows what it could be that a mouse got into it and actually has eaten into some of our, our, our wires we know that there's been mice in the tractor but in a hard situation i can start it this way never ever ever do this unless you are a thousand percent that the tractor is in neutral the brake is on nothing's engaged because if you start that tractor like i did and anything is in gear and it'll kick and it'll run over you and so please be careful if you do something like this and for all i know you could do damage to your electrical system so i just wanted to confirm that it was not the starter it's not the alternator it's something in between the ignition switch and down here so uh we may do a little bit more work over here i just burn up half my day trying to get this figured out okay so yeah, I cleaned up my tools. I'm getting back in this tractor. We're gonna get back to work.
Okay, so I'm just gonna show you around everything that we've done so far. Okay, so right here you can see where these trees are. We pushed all of this stuff back all the way around because you got these trees up here all the way around so that we've got i think a good barrier if nothing else all that dirt no definitely no fire is going to travel over this way but it going up and over is the thing that i was worrying about but now that we've pushed it back a good bit not nearly as worried i'm going to go over there to the other side like i said earlier and i'm going to go ahead and knock that out and uh, do the same thing over there so I can be confident in burning these. And these are gonna get burnt real soon, so that'll be fun to watch. So we're over here now, and this, this is a better distance. This is a better distance. We got a couple trees right here. I'm just gonna grab this stuff here and get it all up in there. I don't think we're gonna have any issue with this. And that one in the middle, like I said, that one's got the big trees that I'll be cutting for firewood or for timber. So let's knock this out. lovely people well <laughs> the uh, most of the job that we needed to get done today got done and we got to play with the tractor a little bit and see if we could troubleshoot what's going on with it we obviously don't know but we're ruling things out one thing at a time and we'll keep doing that until we either a get it fixed or b have to get somebody up here that knows what they're doing or take it into the shop that would be c but uh, I think we're 100% good to burn out here because we're far enough away now. We got all the dirt in the way. We're good on that other side. And we're gonna call this video done. And guys, if, if you stuck in there with me throughout this whole video, I owe you one. Uh, if you liked the video or if you hated the video, like it, dislike it, whatever you wanna do, comment let me know the things that we could have done better different all i can tell you right now is this tractor is running and i just got some work done and that means a lot that means a whole lot <laughs> if i when i get it in the barn and shut it off guess what i'm gonna have to do to start it again yeah i'm gonna have to jump that starter next time i'm up here to get back to work i can't be doing that every time i've got to get this thing permanently fixed so I'll go talk to a service guy at the case dealership and call another dealership, see what their thoughts are. But uh, we very well may have had an issue with some mice getting in there and gnawing on some wiring and causing issues, or we have simpler problems, I hope. So God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time here at The Lovely Place. Take it easy.